Good morning. Good morning, good morning, and blessed be the name of the Lord. We are continuing with our theme, Bible characters and lessons. And we've been talking all week about Jesus. Jesus tempted, all right? And our subject for today is victory over the world. Victory over the world. Let me just say for clarity, the world is a spiritual condition. Let me say that again. Uh, 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 the world is a spiritual condition. It's not the ground you walk on. It's, it's not the earth itself. The world is is a spiritual condition and it is a condition that people are in when they are controlled and driven and motivated by the lust of their sinful flesh you see they're controlled by their sinful feelings and emotions and desires and that's the thing that drives them and controls them and motivates them and they are controlled by the lust for things that they see all right and, and they're driven to get those things just purely by what they see they see it they like it they go to try to get it you know what i mean they're, they're driven by that they're controlled by that and they're controlled by a pride that puts self first of all, and it puts self above all. And so the truth is, this is a description of what our fallen human nature is. The fallen sinful human nature is controlled by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. That's the very nature of devil the devil uh, that's the nature that any created being acquires when they separate from god they are left to themselves therefore they become self-centered driven by whatever's in them their feelings their, their emotions their desires god is not in the picture he's not in them they're driven to get whatever they see and looks good to them and it's, it's not based on any spiritual realities. It's the world. It's a spiritual condition. But the Bible says Jesus has overcome the world. That thing, folks, I said that thing, that condition that holds us captive, Jesus came and took into captivity. And that's good news. And we got to remember always that, that Jesus came to set us free from sin and the flesh and Satan and the world. Please understand that, that true Bible Christianity is all about overcoming. True biblical Christianity is all about gaining and being given the victory folk it is not about being saved in failure and in slavery to sin it's not about that people make it about that whole religious organizations and churches make it about that but that's a falsehood and the the way that that the plan of salvation works is god imparts into us a victory he has already won. It's slow, it's progressive, but he's already won it. It's just a matter of him imparting it into us. And as God imparts into us the victory he has already won for us, he counts us victors and overcomers as we grow. As we become victors and overcomers, he counts us as victors and overcomers. That's, that's a good plan. 
that comes with plenty assurance and insurance. He counts the end product while we're still babes in Christ. Right when we first begin, he counts us already as overcomers because he knows he will accomplish that work. He knows that he is able to accomplish that work. And so he counts it as done because he really did finish that work in Jesus. It is a work already done. And he puts it to our account in the record books of heaven. As we are growing, as we are developing, as we're stumbling and falling and getting up, he counts it as already done. We're safe at every step of the way, providing we are sincerely making an effort in the Lord. But we're going to talk about victory over the world, something that Jesus did for us. And then he comes and makes reality in us. That's what it's all about. Let's pray. Our Father and our God which art in heaven, we are thankful for Jesus. Your plan, Father. You did it. We're thankful for the victory that he has won for us. We already have the victory. We don't have to wait till the battle's over. We can shout now. Uh, we have the end product already. Even though we may not have it absolutely fulfilled in us, it has been done for us. It's put next to our names in the regular books of heaven. And we are being developed and groomed in it. So that when it's all said and done, we reflect what's beside our name in the record books of heaven. And you kept us covered all of the whole while. The whole time we were growing. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you have overcome the world. And then, Lord, help us to really understand that, that we are to be overcomers. Let us not relax and become content with being slaves to the flesh and walking after the flesh and the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and filled with the pride of life. Oh, Lord, please deliver us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, saints, let's look at this subject. Let's look at this thing, victory over the world. If it wasn't for Jesus, we wouldn't have a chance. Huh? But here's what the Bible says about the world. Now remember we said it's a spiritual condition. It's a state of being. It's created beings being disconnected from God and life. But at any rate, let's look at what the Bible says about the world. First John chapter 2 and verses 15 through 17. What does the Bible say? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. He that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And one of the things that is commanded us to do is to don't love the world. Love not the world, the Bible says. Neither the things that are in the world. Don't love it. Don't lust after it. Don't love that condition. Don't love that state of being. Don't keep a grip on that caliber mind. Let another mind be in you. If any man love the world, God said the love of the Father is not in him. And then it explains what the world is, just so in case we don't know. It says all that is in the world. Now it's getting ready to talk about all that's in the world. It didn't start off by naming houses and cars and, you know, massive buildings and cell phones and TVs. And, it didn't name those things. It says all that is in the world, and that's going to explain what it's talking about. It says, first of all, the lust of the flesh. We're talking about the world. We're, the Bible's trying to break down and help you to understand what the world is. All that's in the world is three things. Lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's the condition. That's the state 
that makes things be of the world. You're driven by your feelings and by your emotions and what you what you what you see. That's what you do. You know, you, we are steeped in that too often. Well, you know, I feel it doesn't make any difference what you feel. <laughs> your flesh is evil. Well, well, I don't feel that he did me right. Maybe he didn't, but you're not controlled by that. Too many of us are. We love or hate people based on how we feel, how we feel they did or didn't do, or, or how we feel that they treated us, and they may have done us wrong. And then it's the lust of the eye. That's why some of us, or most of us, in this world are so everlasting, strapped down with debt. It's not from doing the work of God. It's from the lust of the eye. I see that car, I see that house, I see that furniture, I see those clothes, I see that cell phone, I see this, that, this, that, this, that, and the third, and I want it. I'm controlled by that. And then there's the pride of life. These three things make up the world. Self is first. Don't want to be told nothing. We even uh, make it be what the Bible teaches. God teaches you got to love yourself first. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible teaches that you got to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. The Bible doesn't teach that. That's not the way Jesus lived. That's us making that up. It makes rational sense, but it's not the Bible. It is not the Bible. At any rate, God says love not the world, and it breaks down and helps you know what the world is. All right? Now, the Bible goes on. And we're talking about the world because we, we want to understand what this thing is. Uh, Jesus says in John 7, 7, these words. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. He, he's telling people that the world can't hate you because you are of the world. See, I testify of the world that the works thereof are evil. Oh, we got this thing in this to end of time where you just got to make folk feel good. You, you don't tell folk about their sins. You don't sigh and cry for the abominations done in the land. Now, we're not saying you have nothing but stuff negative to say. But there's a flip side to that coin. Because you can rock the sinner to sleep in his sins. The Bible says that there's a thing that where people only want to hear smooth things. They don't want a John the Baptist to show up. They don't want a Elijah to show up. They don't want a Jesus to show up who's going to testify that the works that they're doing is evil. So if I'm in a condition where just the world loves me, everybody just loves me, everybody speaks well of me, God said, the Bible says, beware when men, all men speak well of you. John 15, 18 to 20 says what? If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you also. And we just get so broken and so down and so depressed and so discouraged when people collectively sort of do us bad, sort of talk against us, sort of, sort of be against us. Jesus says, I have chosen you out of the world. We haven't gotten, gotten on any rocket ship and flown off the earth. We haven't done that. Angels haven't come and flown us off into heaven. That hasn't happened. He said, I have chosen you out of the world. I have brought you out of a certain condition <clears throat> and state of mind. And he says the world <coughs> excuse me, will hate you. If you were of the world, the world would love you. But you're not of the world. I have chosen you out of the world. <clears throat> we got to understand that, folk. We have to understand that. We've been mentioning that all throughout the week. John 17, <clears throat> verses 15 through 18. What does the Bible say? 
I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Uh, the Father sent Jesus into a certain condition. God sent Jesus, the Father sent Jesus into a place that was in a certain state, in a certain condition. Jesus says, I, I haven't taken you out of that condition, <clears throat> that, that, that atmosphere that surrounds you. I, I haven't done that. But what I'm going to do is keep you from the evil. See, see, you're going to be in the world. You're going to be surrounded by that environment, but you're not going to be of the world. You're not going to be of that environment. He says, I'm going to sanctify you, but I'm going to sanctify you through the truth. And once I do that, just like the Father sent me to be in this condition, a, a location where this condition permeates, so I'm going to send you into it. I I'm not, I'm not, haven't taken you out of the world. I haven't taken you fully out of the atmosphere of that condition. And the reason is, you got a job to do for others in that condition. But I'm going to keep you from the evil. I'm going to keep you from the evil. We're talking about victory. We're talking about being overcome. Comers. I'm going to keep you from the evil. I'm going to sanctify you through the truth. Let me tell you what the Bible says more about this world and who is the real God of this world. And this is the Bible saying this, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. I just wanted to highlight who the God of this world is. Who the God of this condition and state is. This Godless condition. This condition that is controlled by self and evil desires. The lust for things that are not yours, but you want them anyway. You know, Satan wanted God's place. He wanted rulership. He wanted worship. He wanted to rule. He wanted to have a dominion to rule over. Uh, none of those things were given to him, but he saw them and he wanted them and he was driven. He put self on the throne. That's the world. And the Bible says he is the God of this world. And if you are of the world, you have the same nature, the same evil nature, and you serve Satan. He's your God, not the God of heaven. And churches are filled with folk who serve another God. They'll work for God or not work for God based on whether it's going to disturb the money they make. They're not primarily concerned about the work of God. They're concerned about material things. They got to pay for what's in their house and their rent and their car. And that, that sucks up just about all their money. They run around talking about they're poor. They're not poor. They are not poor. They are not poor. That is just a flat out lie. They're deceived. They are not poor. They have more than one uh, change of raiment. They have food to eat. I ain't talking about just some... Some, some bread and water. They got food to eat. They got appliances in that, their houses that makes them literally have scores of servants. They push a button and stuff happens. They are not poor. But they believe that lie. And therefore, they spend the overwhelming bulk of their money and time and talents and efforts on the things of this world, the things that's going to be destroyed. But they don't realize that's being of the world. They're driven by the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye. That's why they all bogged down. And the pride of life. You better not tell them that. You want to get cursed out and laid out? You tell them that. They're a child of the king. But here's what Jesus says when the devil came to him uh, in John 14, 30. 
hereafter the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Ha! The devil came to Jesus and he had nothing in him. Nothing resonated in Jesus when the devil pushed certain buttons. It resonates in us. All he has to do is show us some stuff and we want it. All he has to do is do something or make other people do a certain thing and, and those emotions and all that stuff go off the rail. Been out of shape, ready to get somebody and do somebody in because they have done us sin or we feel like they have done us sin. Don't want to hear nothing. Oh, I knew that. Well, if you knew it, fine. You don't have to say it. You got to put yourself first. You got to love yourself first. All that kind of stuff. When the devil came to Jesus, he didn't find that stuff in him like he finds it in fallen, sinful humankind. But Jesus tells us this because he knows we're in an undone condition and it's impossible for us to change ourselves. Can a leopard change his spots or an Ethiopian the color of his skin? God says, no more can you change what you are. If you were born that way. John 16, 33 says what? These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer, folk. <laughs> uh, Jesus says, I have overcome the world. And I've come to give you the victory that I've already won for you. Now, because you're not of the world, you're going to have tribulation. It's going to be brought to you by the devil himself <clears throat> and by the myriad of people who serve him. So you're going to have tribulation in the world. I had it. But be of good cheer in spite of your tribulations and troubles and trials and persecutions and ups and downs. You're going to have tribulation. But I have overcome the world. And if you have me, you have the victory. All right? If you have me, you're an overcomer. You might be growing. You might be a babe. You might be young. But you are an overcomer because of me. I've already gotten the victory for you. And I've already put the victory next to your name in the record books of heaven. I have overcome the world. Oh, we're talking about Jesus. The one who was tempted and overcame in every point. And he has come to give us the victory. So much so that Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says this. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, this is an amazing thing. You remember we read earlier where Jesus was talking of the Father who sent him into the world. Sent him in an environment where, where folk are locked up and chained up and enslaved. And he says, so as my Father has sent me, so I send you. To help those. To deliver those. Because I had delivered you, I sent you to be a deliverer in my hand. Jesus says that ye are the light of the world. You know, there's another text where Jesus says, I am the light of the world. How can we be too? We can be too because the light of the world is in us. The light of the world has delivered us. We light up the way. Showing the way of escape. From the darkness of this world, God says, let your light so shine before men. If Jesus is in you, he's going to shine. Let him shine. That he, they may see your good works. It's not like you sit around and do nothing like so, so many of us as professed Christians do. We don't do anything for the Lord. Why do you mention that so often, Elder Ryan? Because we got to come out of that state. We don't do anything. But look at the Bible and attend church maybe once a week. If we're real, real, real faithful, maybe it'll be twice a week. We can't live like that. That's not what Christianity is about. You can't put a light under a bushel and think it's going to be all right. 
You have to put it on a candlestick. You have to let your light shine so that others might see, others might be influenced by what you are and whose you are. Let your light shine that others may see your good work and thus you glorify your Father which is in heaven. You are the light of the world. I have delivered you from the world. That's what Jesus is telling you. I have overcome the world and I have delivered you from the world. Now I send you as a light so that others may see the way out, so that others may see their way to deliverance. Now here's the problem. John chapter 3 verses 19 to 21. Here's the problem. The Bible breaks it down and makes it clear. Here is the real problem. Read those texts for us, Dolores. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And <clears throat> men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Don't tell people that they're wrong. Don't tell them that. I'm telling you. <clears throat> now, I'm being facetious. It's our duty to call sin by its right name. <clears throat> but Jesus says the problem is this. Men love darkness rather than light. And he's talking to the church. He ain't talking to the folk who don't know God, don't love God. He's talking to folk who say they love God. This is why they're condemned. Because when the light comes, they don't want the light. They love darkness rather than light. They, they love sitting around the house rather than going out and seeking to save the lost. They love spending their money on themselves, their house, their obligations, their car, their myriad of bills, their clothes. They don't want to do nothing different. And don't be talking about it either. For everyone that does what's right, who follows the light, he loves to see the light. He doesn't mind hearing it. But for, but for the one who doesn't love the light, he doesn't want to hear about it. You know why? Because his deeds are evil. And those, that talk of what's right reproves him, and he doesn't want to hear it. This is why we're condemned, because when light comes to us, we love the darkness rather than light. Somebody talk about how you should eat. You don't hear that. They don't want to hear it, man. And won't do it. Won't even go to a seminar where it's being taught. They don't want to hear it. They want to eat the dead animals. They want to eat the processed food. And then as a remedy, they want to take the drugs. They don't heal, don't heal, make, might make them feel a little better. That's what they want to do. They don't want to do nothing different. They want to look at that crap on TV. That entertains them. They don't want to hear nothing about how wrong it is. Don't want to hear it, man. And a myriad of other things. They don't want to get up and do nothing. They don't want to hear somebody telling them always get up and go across the road and go down the road and go two blocks short. They don't want to hear that stuff, man. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4 and 5, here's what it says here. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. That condition that you were born in, that condition that enslaves you, is no longer a reality with you. You've been born again. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. That's what the Bible says. Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. He's taken out of that state. He's taken out of that condition. And this is the a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. That's the faith of Jesus. That's the conduit which, through which God channels power into us that changes us. That, that gives us a, a new birth. We believe on Jesus. We believe what he has done for us and what he is doing in us and what he shall always do in us. We've 
got to be, as Jesus says, born again. And the Bible flatly says, whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. You're not a slave to the flesh, to the lust of the flesh. No longer. You're not a slave to the lust of the eye, to the pride of life. You're not controlled by those things anymore. You're controlled by the Spirit. You, you walk after the Spirit. It's not the things of the world that are first anymore. It's the things of God. Oh, let's pray. Our Father and our God, we're thankful for your word of truth, Lord. You have overcome the world. Help us to know what that means. So many are of the world. They love the world. They have no desire to be free from the world. But we're declaring that we're Christians. We serve the world. The, the world gets the majority of everything we have. Everything we do gets the majority of all our time, talents, effort, and money. But we're claiming to be Christians. And we don't want to hear too much about that we're wrong. We don't want to hear that. Oh, Lord, help us, Lord. Make us genuine overcomers. Let us genuinely be born of the Spirit and live like Jesus lived. Too many don't want to live the self-sacrificing, self-denying life of Christ. Do we live the life of Jesus? Let's, let's look at ourselves. Help us to do that, Lord. Do we live the life of Jesus? He didn't have anywhere to lay his head. He worked for others. He worked selflessly. He put others above himself. Oh, Lord, help us to be genuine Christians. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord.